Hi everyone. What I want to go through today is uh, the process that I use to check my CNC for how square it is. And I'm just sharing it because I was able to greatly improve how square I got my CNC and figure that others might find it useful as well. So let's dive in. So my machine is an alt mill. An alt mill actually has a process right within the software called XY squaring that walks you through how to square up your machine. And I've used it. I, that's how I originally set up my machine. Um, and it works on you teaching three points, a start point, a point along the X axis, and then a point along the Y axis. And it then uses the diagonal that you measure between those, that first and last point to calculate how square your machine is. And that got me close, but I was able to improve how square my machine was by using the process that I'm going to go through. And there's two main reasons why I was able to get it more accurate. Number one, I was able to measure more accurately. I found it very difficult to measure on the bed here, even if you make a mark where the, um, where the start point is. And number two, this process really doesn't give you a feedback. It just tells you that you got to move the sensors and then it says your machine is close or close enough to square. Um, the process that I use by uh, putting a pencil on the end of the head of um, my spindle and then marking four points on a square, I was able to measure the square in the end and truly know that it was square versus just the software telling me it was square or square enough. So as a first step, let's go to uh, the software where I draw the squares and uh, we'll carry on from there. So this is the software that I use. It uh, is Aspire, um, but it doesn't matter what software you use. It, uh, anything that designs for your CNC will work for this. Um, and what I've got uh, shown here is basically the outline of my machine in red. So my machine has a cut area of a little over 49 inches by around 35 inches. Um, but what I really want to focus on is these four little tick marks in the corner. So let's shut, shut off or turn off the cut area and focus on these four little marks because that's what we're going to draw. So there's nothing really earth shattering about this, but a couple points I want to make. N number one, you want to start right at your origin um, because it's going to help you to find where you're going to mark these on the board. Uh, but more importantly, what I want to highlight is um, these vectors here. Um, you want to really start drawing from the corner inboard and make sure that the pencil follows that line. And the main reason is if your pencil holder has any flex in it, you want it to be in its natural position at the start point in the corner and then draw away from that. And um, not everybody realizes that the way you draw the vectors, the, um, the start point and the end point, your machine will follow that, or the uh, tool path you create will follow where the vector starts. So to make sure you're starting um, in the corners, this needs to be your start point. And if you draw your line starting from here down, it's going to make this your start point. So you can change the location or the direction of a vector just by clicking on it, right clicking and say reverse direction. And you can see now that the vector is going towards the corner and you really don't want that. Another way is you can right click on a point and say, make this your start point and that will change the vector as well. So right now I've got all vectors drawn um, so that they're coming, starting at the corners and going inward. The other point I want to make is you want to make these squares um, as large as possible within reason of your cut area. You're going to get more accurate the larger the square is. So now that I've drawn these four corners uh, tick marks, uh, I'm 
I've saved this file I've uh, sent to my machine, so let's go back to the CNC and draw some lines. So we're back out in the machine. I've loaded my file onto the computer here. I've got a piece of MDF that's just a little larger than the tick marks that we're going to make on the bed of my mach machine. It's just sitting there. It's not uh, secured in any way because uh, we're only going to draw on it with a pencil. I've got my little pencil holder uh, mounted on my CNC. This one happens to be quite robust. There's very little flex in that pencil, but I still like drawing from the corners inboard just to alleviate any flex if there is any. So I'm going to move to the front right corner. I've got to move my board here so that it's so I'm definitely within the uh, within the realm of being able to mark on it. Got to make sure it's relatively square so we hit the corners. Let me just uh, head to the back corner here. Make sure it's relatively square. So I'm going to teach it in just uh, from the edges just a hair here. So make that my 0x, 0y. Go down Z and until my pencil just touches. Zero out the Z and then run the program. So my uh, spindle has a little bit of a delay here uh, for the spindle to get up to speed, but the spindle actually isn't going to run in this case. We're only going to draw little marks. So we'll let that run. So we'll just send the head back. So now I've got my board with uh, my four marks on it. And I'm going to move this onto some saw horses so I can more accurately measure it. So I've moved the MDF over here on a couple saw horses. It used to be on my CNC. And you can see the tick marks in the corner. Um, they're on all four corners. And I'll go over how I measure this. And this is what helps me or help me get the accuracy on getting my machine more square. So I generally line up a, a known measurement here. I'll just go 10 inches at the one corner and the tape measure more or less lines up with the diagonal. Go over to the other side and if I measure here, I am, well it says 67, but you got to take off 10 inches. So it's 57 and 13 sixteenths. Now, doing the same thing across the other diagonal. I'm going to put down the phone here. Again, starting off at 10 inches and measuring the diagonal. I got, again, 67, oh, it should be 57 and 13 sixteenths. So I was not able to get even, well, I guess I got close to that, but I got much more accurate by um, measuring this way. So let's go back to the CNC because this is generally an iterative process. 
Um, I already squared my machine. I just wanted to show it. But let's go back to the CNC with the MDF again. So what you saw there results with the measurements was after I had squared my machine using this process once before. But uh, as I mentioned, this generally, you don't get numbers like that the first time. And it's an iterative process. So I put the MDF back on. I've actually located it so it's a little off from before. I'll uh, bring my little camera over so you can see. So if I go to zero Z, you can see it's off just a little bit from the prior marks. So if I start to run this program again, it's going to make new marks. And um, the nice thing is it uh, doesn't waste material. You can actually easily just Erase the marks if you gotta do this more than two or three times. But I found it uh, to be an extremely useful uh, method that I wanted to share. So that's it for this video. I just wanted to share this process with everybody because I found it beneficial and hope others do as well. I really didn't go through how to actually square up the machine. I know for the alt mill, there's a couple uh, proximity sensors at the rear that are relatively easy to adjust, but that's very machine dependent um, and something that's generally easy to uh, search up and how to adjust. But uh, I'd love to hear comments from anybody. Maybe you've even got a better method. I'd love to hear about that as well. But thanks for watching.